in this whole paper number 7 we are looking into modern dance and its development its beginning you have studied in the bachelor's course but how did it go further from the pioneers in america and the spread of modern dance and each country what it calls modern dance free dance creative dance how with the traditions that were part of the country those countries these countries india southeast asia europe and how like a fire the modern dance has spreaded so we're going to try and look into the issues and development how and what of modern dance in india today so immediately upon attaining independence in 1947 india sought to put many aspects of its cultural and artistic aspirations in order in the field of arts the most important state initiative was to set up of three national academies of called the lalit kala academy for fine arts sahitya academy for literature and sangeet natak academy for dance music and drama this was done in 1950 by an act of the parliament these three academies were housed in delhi and today sit in the rabindra bhavan these national bodies were to be facilitators not controllers of the artistic and cultural aspirations of a race and its people indian dance had suffered debasement and disrepute under 400 year long colonial rule making many forms almost die foreign rulers did not comprehend the underlying spiritual content and connect of these art forms based as these were in indian mythology and religious practices and discouraged their practice thus in absence of patronage most classical forms were languishing when india became independent it was left to few nationalistic individuals to help restart and help revive most dance forms ramindranath tagore vallathol narayan manan and rukmini devi arundel can be called pioneers who helped revive and platform various dance forms visiting foreign dancers like the russian ballerina anna pavlova american dancers stage shawn and ruth sandanis la mary and ragini devi too helped open our eyes to the beauty of our classical forms they teamed and partnered with upcoming indian dancers like uday shankar ram gopal and gopinath and took them on tours within india and abroad making them and the indian dances widely known seeing its appreciation internationally a few indians too decided to help revive some of the forms the chief players were vallathol narayan menon who in 1930 established kerala kala mandalam near shornor to revive kathakali and mohiniattam rukmini devi arundel set up kalakshetra in 1936 in madras to help structure the art of the devadasis then called sadir and now bharatanatyam the courts of north india had all but declined and kathak was reduced to a dance of notch girls so individual efforts and fledgling institutions like the sangeet bharati and bhartiya kala kendra in delhi took initiatives in kathak teaching later under the sangeet natak academy the kathak kendra was established to teach kathak systematically 
These then were the three principal forms of dance immediately after India became independent. Odyssey was not recognized as a classical dance form by the National Academy until 1958 and Satriya of Assam as late as 2000. Manipuri, Yakshagan, Kuchipudi, Chau remain group arts at village levels and its structuring and organization took place later in the 60s and 70s. Thus, we see that the main eight classical dance form came into prominence after independence and today with the addition of Kshatriya, there are eight. Bengal for long has been trying to call a classical form its own but has not succeeded as Bengal gifted to India its modern dance. Uday Shankar, the elder brother of Sitar Miastro Ravi Shankar created India's first steps in modern dance and his followers Zora Segal, Sachin Shankar and Narendra Sharma carried the mission forward. Today Mamta Shankar, Tanushi Shankar remain its custodians in Kolkata and in many other cities the new modern dance in India has developed. In the 60s and 70s, Indian classical dance forms got a major boost from all quarters, governments, the print media and the international exposure. The reasons were many, a resurgent India best expresses its new nation status with its arts forms and musicians and dancers became the main proponents. The main dancers in this period were Indrani Rahman, M. K. Saroja, Vaijanti Malabali, Kamala Lakshman, Yamini Krishnamurti in Bharatanatyam, Shambhu Maharaj, Damianti Joshi, Roshan Kumari, Maya Rao, Kumudini Lakya, Uma Sharma, and Birju Maharaj in Kathak, Vedantam Satyanarayan, Yamini Krishnamurti, and a Kamadeva in Kuchipudi. The Javeri sisters and Vinodini Devi in Manipuri. Orisi had Indrani Rahman, Rita Devi, Yamini Krishnamurti, Sanyukta Panigrahi, Kumkum Mohanti, Adika Panikar, and Sonal Mansi. This period also saw many dance dramas, loosely called ballets. Dancers did not speak words, but the narration was inbuilt in dance and music. And the main dance companies were Bharatiya Kala Kendra with its Ram Leela, Natya Ballet Center with its Krishna Leela, Kathak Kendra with many productions like Shani Avad under Mirju Baharaj, Puppet Ramayan by Little Ballet Group, Sachin Shankar's and Yog Sundar's production. In South, Natraj Shakuntala created many Tamil epics in ballet forms and the Kalamandalam dished out regular Kathakali dance dramas. The Yakshagana tradition continued in rural Karnataka and Andhra. Temple related festivals continued through Bhagavat Mela Natakams. The 80s were more of the same stuff with two clear new highlights. Organizational of dance festival by the state. First, the tourism angle took over and thus Bureaucrat created Khajuraho Dance Festival and now each state copies that model with Konark, Elora, Mahabalipuram, Modera Dance Festivals. Soon initiative was the Festivals of India, a state sponsored mega cultural projection of India abroad. Malvika Surukai was discovered suddenly for festival in France, Aditi Mangaldas for USA. The festivals in, of India in UK in 82, France in 85, USA 85, USSR 86, Sweden 87, Japan 88, Germany 91 gave many dancers great opportunity to arrive internationally. Some dancers who are still regularly performing ab abroad are Aral Meirwalli and Madhvi Mudgal. Chandralekha and Kumudini Lakya had performed their forms Bharatanatyam and Kathak in the 60s and 70s but did not su succeed as soloists. 
they came center stage as choreographers of dance thanks to smart reinvention and positioning by a set of circumstances. A German diplomat posted in Bombay named George Lechner initiated the East West dan uh, Dance Encounter and thus helped reinvent them. It gave them new lease of life as dancers turned choreographers. The second milestone of the 80s thus became this East West Encounter in 1984. This set of a trend in contemporary dance, which basically meant those dancers who had trained in one or more classical forms, tried to create um, away from set repertoire. These two dancers thus laid the mainstream movement into two classical forms, Kathak and Bharatanatyam. They inspired many after them, some of their own students like Daksha Shet, Aditi Mangaldash, Padmini Chatur and Hamsa Moeli. Many NRI dancers settled abroad too have taken to this approach. Chief among them are Akram Khan in London and Shobhana Jay Singhe again in London. In the 90s and more so now, the art of soloist has become the art of group. That is the biggest change in Indian dance. This has come out come about due to many reasons. Earlier, the dancer had the training and foundation to perform for minimum two hours. They had a repertoire to interest such an audience and able gurus who knew what to teach each prized pupil. Not anymore. Gurus have become teaching factories where clones are churned out. Dancing schools are many with no quality control and as against 10 grades in each form, we now have 100 grades. A generous media with ample space to fill has not helped to sift and form gold and found gold. And thus anyone who moves a limb gets written about and often glowingly. This may sound maybe a bit too critical, but to an extent the reality does stand. But also there is an another aspect that that was the only and only profession that the traditional dancers and gurus had. They had nothing to do, the state provided the patronage. They dance for the temples, they dance for the kings and that was the life. Here in the independent India and it is not hereditary anymore, people who love dance, who love music go to learn. But once you start learning, like a girl coming from middle class, she starts learning dance and then realizes that beyond learning the technique and mastering it, there is so much to become a performer and that is one of the reasons that the best of the talents do not come out and are not able to come out in the public. Anyway, let us go ahead with reviews having gone out of the mainstream newspapers and in absence of an expert and a qualified critic, the generalistic now can write on dance, music and drama in the same vein as the same generalized generalistic can write on food, fashion and films. This century has been and seen anyone and everyone who dances trying to innovate. This has come about because dancers claim sponsors want something new, something different. That way films with violence and excessive titillation can be justified too, that audience is wanted. But what is the end result? The art form suffers and tests gene and rate. Innovation also means in simple terms that one does not have to patience to learn and perform any one classical form properly and thus a smattering of various forms and cultures is mixed up and served as a new dish. Many proponents have tried their hand and feet 
at it with no real results. Modern dance in India is just a contemporary response to the tradition. Unlike in America, which created a genre of modern dance, largely because it had no tradition of classical dance or ballet as in Europe. India does not have modern dance. So, what does that mean? It means just as we need alphabets to make a word to form a sentence that makes sense or meaning in dance too, we need grammar, structure, comprising of units, movements and postures to make sense or convey meaning. Thus, modern dance in India is not easy business because India has such vast dance traditions and languages. It also has layers and layers of historical reference points plus a very detailed approach to stage and costume through the tenets of Natya Shastra. To break from this mold, it is not easy for dancers trained in classical forms and yet be relevant by being different. It is a very tough call for exponents who need to be Indian in content and yet modern in concept. Modern dance also is about approach and attitude. It means one has developed new methodologies about themes, presentation and structure. Deconstruction has become a buzzword wherein many are trying to see traditional forms in new light and they are trying to reinvent the will as it were. In that sense, only a handful of dancers have succeeded in creating something new, not just based on classical forms, but away from it. After the first generation of pioneers like Uday Shankar and Ram Gopal, Gopi, Gopinath and Ananda Shivaram, who basically were reviving lost Indian traditional forms and using for cameos or ballets, these were new generation artists of 1960s like Uttara Asha Kurlawala, who was a pioneer who in mid 60s gave a glimpse of what modern Indian dance can be. Her work was original and her body language away from any classical form of India. She was the first to initiate a trend which others like Asta Dabu followed. She is now a retired dancer but active teacher and academician in New York City where she also taught at the Long Island University. She did pioneering modern dance in 60s and 70s and led to the movement solo based in Mumbai and her example inspired Astad, who continues till date. Astad Debu was born in a small town in India, Jamshedpur, which did not offer much dance learning. When he shifted to Bombay, he saw much dance. His inspiration was Kathak and Kathakali and modern dancer Uttara Kurlawala. On the modern scene, after Uttara left for USA in 1970s, his worldwide travels gave him exposure to modern trends in Germany and Europe, where he also stayed and worked with dance companies, most of notable Wuppertal in Germany, the Pina Bausch School. In India, he had smattering of learning few poses of Kathakali and some stray Kathak and was not firmly based in any one Indian classical form which maybe helped him evolve as modern dancer. Without crutches or firm cement of ne one classical style. He has now gone beyond the forms he knew and has worked with dancers and drummers from Manipur and other parts of India. He creates works for and with physically handicapped and has succeeded in making modern dance meaningful. The one true original talent in modern dance is Daksha Shet, whose film star daughter Isha Sharwani shows merit. Daksha Shet learned Kathak under Kumudi Lakya and Chau from Guru Krishna Chandra Nayak, who had shifted from Gwalior to teach at the Bharatiya Kala Kendra at the behest of Mohan Kokar, 
then secretary Sangeet Natak Academy. Daksha had moved from Ahmedabad after years of struggle to Delhi. She learned Mayur Bhanchao with Guru Nayak, propounded the created benchmark words within Kathak and Chau, like Vivaldi, A Search for My Tongue, and Malakam. In fact, she helped revive Malakam in a big way and created works in that, also adding Kalari, since she now lives in Kerala. Daksha Sheth is hailed as a gold standard in modern Indian dance. Her genuine lies in not creating two works that look alike. All her works have stamp of originality and maestroship. She mentors many young talent, a task in which her daughter Isha and husband Dev Isaro help her as artistic partners. Her latest production, Sari, is very well received. Others who have ventured to modern dance successfully are Nrutya Rutya group of Bangalore, sisters Mayuri and Maduri Upadhyay. They learned basic Kathak from Maya Rao and then devised their own works and in 10 short years today are the most sought after dance company. They have also created a huge body of work in short few years and each work stands out for its originality and execution. Works like Chitara, Ras and Madhushala are benchmark creations. When Amitabh Bachchan celebrated his 70th birthday in a stadium which dance companies asked, was asked to create a special work based on his father's poem Madhushala. Nritya Rutya, Prime Minister Modi went to Hanover Fair in Germany, which Indian dance company is there to perform, Nritya Rutya. The sisters have won distinction for different works with a cohesive team. They also are area first rate professionally run dance company. Others who have attempted some version of modern dance are Madhu Nataraj with her STEM Natya company. Uh, she is the daughter of legendary Maya Rao. Madhu has basic training in Kathak learning and has carved a place for herself. Activist publisher Bharatanatyam trained dancer Anita Ratnam has also attempted works with gongs and tongs and lavish costumes. Samudra type groups have just copied their influences and not much original work around. Their work is rather repetitive and expect good costumes and add on. The content remains basic. These are references point at the best. Each brings some new dimension to table with forms they have been exposed to and trained in. Many minor players abound in each city like Sridhar in Mailapur dancing to A.R. Rahman music or Amish Sridhar in Bangalore doing his hip hop. Shai Dawar types of gymnastics have become popular as these are easy to learn and easy to show in public spaces. Flesh dance and mob dance entertain some in malls and parks. Lots of new choreographers have sprung up to cater to TV reality shows, but they have no lasting power in dance. Companies come and break up after few years. Petty egos and jealousies, hallmark of lack of Indian teamwork, also are chief reasons sometimes. In this scenario, to maintain and work as professional dance company is not easy. The robust film industry both in Mumbai and Madras have offered a veritable feast of dance and over the years dance masters and choreographer have provided much fodder for popular consumption. This genre in truly Indian, there is no other description for it. Though in last 10 gymnastics have replaced true dancing abilities as most act film actors have no time for proper training and thus group gyrations and gymnastic take the make the task much easier. The spin off of film as mass media is best reflected now through the invasion of the cable TV, television and the last five years an abundance of dance related TV shows. While Puritans may debunk Boogie Woogie as a precursor of bad taste in dance and thereby ruining a whole generation of young Indians. 
The sheer ratings and survival of the show has ensured several copies, each more glamorous and opulent. Nach Balye, Aja Nachle, Dancing Queen, suddenly the studios of Mumbai churning out these competitions make one feel that the whole nation is suddenly dancing. In some ways, thanks to these shows, Indians have loosened up a bit and feel less conscious of their bodies. Thanks to these shows and dance, is no more a reserve, preserved or dirty word. The dance bars of Bombay also provided employment to out of work cabaret artists who may be waiting to get a foothold in the film industry. The success of school level gymnastic salsa combine of Shai Dawar has spurned several spurious copycats as far as in Delhi and Kolkata. Dance has become health related and the Vandanas and the Chandanas of the world are encashing on this trend by offering loose weight through dance and maybe a distant and desi cousin of Jane Fonda has been found right here in India. Our rich and varied folk forms that have continued to be performed in rural settings basically to celebrate seasons or harvest, seen only on festive or harvest occasions. In its own setting, these forms from Rofs to Kashmir to Kavadi of Kanyakumari tell us the richness of rural India. But there too, films and its version of folk dance are making inroads because the television has reached the remotest corner of India. Leveling out trends and traditions, costumes have undergone changes and one sees the senseless tinsel and synthetic textiles replace cultural symbols connected to weaving seasons and Mother Earth. Indian modern dance today remains at an interesting crossroad. There is a fusion and a confusion. There are multiple choices for a generation of multitaskers. These dancers and choreographers are good at everything and the master of none. This then is the age of generalist not specialist. Thus, in this milieu, classical traditions have less takers, both in audience and by way of sponsors, support and modern dance has not come of age. India's best export item, Natraj, the lord of dance, wonders why a country with a continuous links with its past needs to break away just to be new. This is also a question that concerns dancers, historians and critics. From this manthan or churning, surely something new and magnificent should emerge a response to our times. Modern dance will emerge once a language is formed. The process is on, we have to literally wait and watch. I think the modern dance process in India because if modern dance in America developed from ballet and as you can see it has a lot of balletic training and technique. A lot of dancers in India, the classical dancers are using the base technique as their own style and creating beyond the accepted mythological Puranic songs and dance, uh, dance dramas. They are not only changing the presentation of techniques, but along with that the concept. So, the form is extended, expounded and the content is changed.